Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. On the 23rd of July, The Real News published a story from Alexander Park in Athens, Greece, where there's an encampment of recently arrived Afghan refugees. The situation in Greece has certainly worsened in terms of the number of refugees arriving at its shores daily. The UNHCR estimates that the number is at about 1,000 people a day. Now joining us to discuss the situation is Mohamed Mirze. Mohamed uh, actually joined us in, in that visit to the uh, Afghan refugee camp at Alexander Park back on July 23rd, and he joins us again from Greece. Thanks for joining us, Mohamed. Thank you so much from you. So, Mohammed, let's begin with giving us an update. What has happened at the camp, and uh, are the number of refugees there growing? So, when you were in Greece, just you know that in the first day, in the first day that uh, we were together in Alexander Park, and people they uh, were in Alexander Park until uh, 16 August. And from 16 August, uh, before that, we had uh, some meetings with the uh, Greek authorities. And already before we spoke with uh, these uh, simple refugees who are coming from uh, from different uh, countries and they came in Alexander Park, we just wanted them to know what they want to do. Because it was very important for us that what these refugees need, not what we need for them. So they wanted uh, they, they wanted to say that uh, they don't want it to be uh, stay in Greece. That's why we requested from Greek authorities and the European authorities to to find a way to make a temporary guest house for refugees in Athens. From uh, 16 uh, uh, August, uh, there is a guest house in the center of Athens. The, the name of guest house is Eleona. So we have uh, already, uh, there is already 800 refugees from 16 August in uh, Eleona, but we have the same, we have a, a long number of refugees there, 800 at least. And uh, again, we are, wa we are waiting for new refugees who are coming from different uh, uh, islands of Greece. But I think this uh, place is not enough. And uh, we have already, from uh, already a lot of refugees in different squares of Athens. Now, Mohammed, one of the issues that these Afghan refugees were facing when we interviewed them is that they were being deprioritized uh, in light of the number of Syrian refugees that were coming to Greece as well, and the Syrian uh, refugees were given prior priority on the part of UNHCR. Is that still the case? Uh, you just uh, mentioned in a very good point, but for me personally, refugees should be refugees. And what is what I see, it is a big wrong in the uh, European Union, and maybe I can say in different in all of the countries mostly, most of European uh, countries and UNHCR, they support uh, Syrian ref refugees and they put in a fast track Syrian refugees and they don't ignore other refugees, but uh, they don't they are very, in a very slow track everywhere. Now, That's one of the difficulties is uh, both uh, in Greece and, of course, in the islands of Greece, is really uh, the ability for UNHCR to process and listen to the cases and, uh, and uh, you know, admit them as refugees. The problem, apparently, in Greece is that a lot, a lot of the refugees coming in are actually in transit. They want to actually go elsewhere. Is that being facilitated by UNHCR? Yeah, thinking. It is uh, two, three, four years that UNHCR, if you go to research in a website of UNHCR, they are just following Syrians histories and Syrians refugees in different islands, different places, different countries. But the problem is that they cannot, they don't follow Afghan refugees. I think the, pro the difference is this, that in Afghanistan we have 40 years war and in Syria we have four years. This is the difference. And secondly, most of the uh, media and people, activists, they are focusing in Syrian refugees, but not in Afghan refugees or other refugees. Uh, for me, what, what we are just facing in Greece, we have only guest house, and uh, we just create this temporary guest house, but in other European countries, there is no guest house. You know that in different countries, again, in Serbia, Macedonia, and uh, other countries, 
people are just staying in tents in the, in the park and the squares, right? And uh, I understand that now, officially, some of the European countries, um, uh, Germany, Austria, uh, France, and other countries have really uh, indicated that they're going to uh, accept uh, the largest number of refugees. Um, so are you saying, then, that these refugees that you are um, dealing with at this moment, about 800 of them, uh, are not getting any attention in terms of processing them into these countries like France and Germany? Thank you. Uh, what, uh, what I'm not happy with uh, European decision and with, uh, with uh, countries who just uh, said that, OK, we are going to accept long number of refugees, but they just wanted to mention in their, uh, again, in their discussion and in their uh, uh, speech that we accept Syrian refugees. But it, it, it means that they, they cannot include other refugees. Hmm. You know um, what I mean. And, and you... uh, as far as you know, Mohammed, why is that? Why are they prioritizing Syrian refugees over other refugees, like from Afghanistan, as far as the UNHCR is concerned? Thinking. It's a, it's a, I think it can be a policy, but maybe it needs for me to study and to follow this policy for long years. Yeah. Right, but what I see uh, personally, as a student, personally, that I'm just working for some refugees. For me, a refugees is a refugees, right? And uh, what I, what I, what I just see, it can make me crazy like this. That okay, people again, civilian people who are coming in from Australia, from Sweden, this is the right Syrian refugees welcome. And again, you're just waiting for people who are working for human rights. Okay, again, they say we are going to accept Syrian refugees. But my question is this: What? Why? Why it should be? I, I want to understand. I want to. I want. I really. I'm. I will be very happy if I hear from them why they accept Syrian refugees, but not other refugees. So, uh, so far, from what we have heard if, in terms of our interviews we've conducted with the UNHCR, is that UNHCR has themselves, as an agency, uh, been allocated funding to deal with Afghan refugees uh, as a second and third priority, not the priority. Uh, Syrians are obviously, because of the, uh, the conflict uh, that is underway in Syria, are getting prioritized. Um, because they're deemed to be more at risk. Um, but I agree with you in terms of your sentiment where a refugee is a refugee and should be uh, treated in the order that they have uh, arrived in terms of a safe country. Um, we will look into that. Uh, and, Mohammed, we hope to come back to you soon to s and follow this case in terms of what's happening to these uh, Afghan refugees. Yes, please do. And I said you just the last thing. But uh, what I understand, maybe I'm, I'm wrong, but uh, I want the other the audience or maybe your uh, partners, maybe I want you, you to thinking, maybe I'm right or maybe I'm wrong. I think one thing that European accepts Syrian refugees because Europe is not agree with the government of Syrians. But when they don't accept Afghan refugees, maybe, maybe they are agree with the government of Afghanistan. It can be a reason. And the others, I, I cannot find other reason. Yeah. Personally, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Yes, it's a good point you raise. They're all leaving uh, hostile and very uh, violent and brutal conditions um, where they lived before. I thank you for joining us today, Mohammed. I hope that in the future, maybe people, they can, the European authorities, European countries, they just make clear with Afghans, because uh, if they were, they were countries. They are responsible. And they thought they are responsible to help with Afghanistan, and they promised with the civilian people of Afghanistan. That's why they sent NATO in Afghanistan. You know that a lot of uh, European countries, they are member of NATO. So thinking that's why you, you send soldiers in Afghanistan. You, by yourself, you answer to your questions that these people, they, have, they don't have uh, security. Yeah. Mohammed, thank you. And I uh, hope the situation gets better. Um, where you are, but we'll certainly follow this story. Thank you for joining us today. Have a good time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.